Hello guys, my name is Luis Gabriel Herrera from Luis Gabriel Photography and today I'm going to be sharing with you uh, a few tests that I did recently with four lenses which are the Sigma 135mm 1.8 Art, the Sony 85 1.4 uh, GM, the Sony 100mm STF and the A-mount version the 135mm STF. So the idea was to compare the rendering, especially the bokeh, and see how they uh, match against regular lenses, the STF versus normal lenses. So here we go, uh, the four different samples I want to be sharing. Uh, when uh, we're going to put in the description a link to download all these files, so you can check them out on your end, but I'm going to show you here how it looks. So let's uh, make this fit on the screen, and let's start with the 85. So this will be the Sony. 85 millimeter 1.4 GM. This is wide open, and this is going to compare to the 100 millimeter. So this is the 85. This is the Sony 100 millimeter STF. As you can see, obviously the 184 has. I'm oh, sorry, the 85 has a lot more uh, blur on the background here. This one is an STF design, which is uh, 2.8, even though it shows as a 5.6 because this is the T-stop, not the F-stop that is showing there. Um, it has less blur, but it's a very smooth rendering. Uh, the smoothest rendering that I have seen on any lens is the STF design. But the amount is not enough for my needs. I prefer the extra pop and isolation that you get from a faster lens. Again, this is just my opinion. If you like the STF better, that's great. You know, you just have to find the tools that make you shoot more. That's all that matters. So in that regards, I have to apologize that the size, uh, the, the framing of the subject is different on the 85 and 100 that it is on the 135s. But there was a storm coming, so we had to set up everything and rush out of there immediately. So I did what I could with the time that I had. Um, I'm going to show you now the 135 Sigma. So this is the Sigma 135 millimeter, uh, wide open. And this is the Sony A mount 135 millimeter again wide open. So this is an STF design. See how beautiful the rendering is. And this is a regular design. Once again, you see more of a 3D pop look out of a, a regular fast lens versus the STF design. But the STF is this beautiful blur that it's uh, just perfect. So it's a matter of uh, preferences. How does the 100 compare to the 135? This is the 100. This is the 135. Again, the framing is different, so that does affect the the comparison. Sorry, but I didn't have more time to set up. So you got the 100 millimeter STF, the 135 STF, the Sigma 135, and the Sony 85. So Sony, uh, sorry, Sigma. Sony 135 Sigma 85 Sony it's a pretty nice interesting comparison because uh, Sigma is has kind of famous for not having the greatest bokeh but apparently they've been improving a lot with the latest releases because this is not bad at all compared to the Sony GM of course it has extra compression because of the f uh, focal length so that helps but I have both lenses, neither of the lenses are going anywhere, so I love them both, so that tells you I'm pretty impressed with the Sigma. As far as the STF, if I were to have one of the STF, it will probably be the 135 because it gives me the extra blur that I want, even though it's not as sharp as the 100mm and also it has chromatic aberrations like this one that you see here and it happens pretty often on the bokeh. Uh, so. It's not perfect, it's manual focus as well. So a few things you have to consider when picking, if you if you want to pick one of these lenses up, the STF design. Uh, let's check another example that we have here. And on this one, once again, nature had a surprise for us. And this was not a storm, it was a mosquito storm. My poor model, I don't know how she managed to handle that because I've never seen so many mosquitoes in my life. And we have a very limited time to shoot. We couldn't go to another location, so just took the pictures and here I'm sharing with you guys. I had to return the lenses shortly after that, so I didn't have another day to shoot. Hopefully my next uh, comparison review is gonna be uh, better. So let's uh, go this. 
put that and this is the uh, uh, Sigma 135 millimeter 1.8 it's a normal rendering for this set of lenses on the branches it creates this warm like rendering that I like to call uh, let's see how it compares to the Sony 135 so this is the Sony 135 and this is the Sigma obviously the Sigma has a way more blur and makes the subject stand out more but the bulk on the 135 is super smooth even though it, you still see a little bit of the warm rendering here on these branches but it's obviously less than here now the Sony 100 it doesn't have any of the warmth but it's not really doing much of a blur on the branches so I'm not sure if that's a fair comparison to the other lenses but in any case this is the 100 the 135 both the STF design and you can probably see some of the mosquitoes here <laughs> so yeah it was a battle anyways 100 135 and then the Sigma 135 with the regular rendering which one is better matter of preferences I kept the Sigma so that tells you what I like more doesn't mean that it's the best for everybody so again the, there's going to be a link to download all these files so you can check them out I'm going to run some um, um, sample images that I took with all the lenses at the end of the video if you want to uh, check that out too um, please subscribe because I'm coming out uh, this next week with a four-way shootout it will include four 85 millimeter lenses which are the Sony 85 1.4 GM the Sony 85 1.8 the BAT is 1.8 and the Sigma 1, uh, 85 1.4 ART so that's four 85mm lenses I'm going to be comparing I have the model, I have everything set hopefully the weather is going to cooperate and this time it's going to be easier because you don't have to be moving anything around as they are all the same focal range if you have any questions, any suggestions for the review or anything else you want to see please uh, leave me a message and I'll be uh, I'll do all I can to, to uh, to give you the information that you're requesting or answer your questions um, please keep in mind I also have an A6300 if you want to see some APS-C tests I can use that camera I normally use my A7R2 for my test I will probably do a small video of all the gear that I have in case you have questions or want to see something with soft boxes, uh, light meters etc so look up for that video so if you want to keep in touch please subscribe and get ready for my new videos have a good one and enjoy the, the gallery coming up.